So we continue to read from Saints of Raj, page uh, 339, chapter 32, the story of Sri Gopal Das Babaji. <coughs> great devotee. Gopal Das took after his father. When he was still very young, he seemed indifferent to the world and spent most of his time in bhajan. Megavarn Sharma was very happy to see this. Like a true father, he gave him Diksha and advised him to go to Braj and do bhajan after taking Vesh from a saint in the disciplic order of Sri Narottam Thakur Mahasheya. Gopal Das was unusually fortunate. Generally, people have to pass through many ups and downs, doubts and difficulties, and periods of uncertainty and irresolution before they learn that the only purpose of life is to do bhajan and realize the Lord and they have to struggle hard with themselves and their family if they want to renounce the world. But Gopal does own some skaras and his discerning and beneficent father's guidance made everything so easy and smooth for him. He went to Braj and took Vesha from Sri Vinoda Dasji, a disciple of Sri Damodar Das, Damodar Dasji, in the disciplic succession of Sri Narottam Thakur. Vinoda Ji lived near Chakaleshvara Mahadev in Govardhan. He advised him to go and live in Radhakund and study the Shastras from Sri Ishwar Dasji. He lived in Radhakun for three years and studied Srimad Bhagavatam and the works of the Gaudiya Goswamis from Ishwar Dasji. He also wanted to learn Brajabhasha, but Ishwar Dasji told him, it would be good for you not to learn Brajabhasha, which is the language of Raj. <clears throat> if you learn, you will come close to the Brajabhasis. Your contacts with them will create disturbance in your bhajan, and the chances of your committing offenses against them will also increase. So this is very you know, interesting for for us, for me. Because they are born in their Vaishnava family, still, still to, to get cross association of Brajabashi is, is also not so very good. Also, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates, Mahaprabhu also said to, I think Jagadananda or some, some person. 
Somebody want to visit Brindavan. And then Mahaprabhu is asking, don't stay longer. And short visit. And always under, under the guidance of like Sanatana Gosami, etc. So this is uh, like for foreigner, for us, we are foreigner. So we are also understand, but Mahaprabhu time, or even this time also, some guru say like this, this is for me very interesting. Radharada Gurudev, are you there? Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Guru. Thank you. We just. So, why Guru is easy to make offense to Brajavasi? Like, how we have to be careful when we are in Vrindavan to deal with the Brajavasis, how to. Uh, how to be careful, like here. More, no, it's so, uh, give to everyone. Actually, carefulness means language. When we involve to know the language, then we have to know the good and bad things. But we have to know only good thing of Krishna. Mm -hmm. So that way, there is no need to be a doubtful for Krishna. That is <coughs> so we, we keep distance also at the same time. When you have no language, you know, go in their personal life. And personal life, they are also normal person. Their behavior is normal with the family. And then you feel wrong, wrong reactions come by their behavior. But the, actually, the thing is this, the Parajmasi is how connected is with Krishna, then we not understand that. We see the normal person, but they are really how they are connected and how they have a service more to give their things. We will not feel that. We will see the only minus In some reason, <laughs> that we will talk with the ladies and Mataji's and we will go inside their behavior. So it's better to be little keep the sense and the quality inside them. <laughs> What school did you say that we should always respect the Vichabasi? Because actually we don't know who they are and they are not ordinary persons. Because in they are very connected that we will not see with Krishna. We will see the bad normal thing that nah, they are doing like I am. They are fighting, they are, they have no good nature, like this, we will see the wrong So language makes you close to that. This is the reason of telling to, to his disaster. Thank you, Guru. Thank you.
<coughs> oh, after completing his study of the Shastras, Gopal Das Baba kept wandering in Vraja for some time. He did not live at any particular place for more than a day. But in the end, he settled down in village Koni and began to live near Vamsikunda in that village. He got Madhukari from the Brajabasis and ate only once in the evening. If any day he got more Madhukari than he could eat, he did not go for Madhukari on subsequent days until the Madhukari he already had was finished. He ate with pleasure whatever he got in Madhukari, even if it was stale or rotten. But if he got sweets or other good things, he did not eat them. He gave them away to others. He used only earthen utensils made from the dust of Raja. He lived in Kony for 40 years. But he loved very much the company of Sri Hari Gopal Das Baba, a disciple of Siddha Madhusudan Das Babaji. Hari Gopal Das Baba lived in Suryakunda. Therefore, after 40 years, he shifted to Suryakunda and began to live in the veranda of an old temple there at the bank of Suryakund. Baba used to read at least one chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam every day. When he became 90 years old, he lost his eyesight. This pained him very much because he could not read Bhagavatam anymore. One afternoon, when he was brooding over his plight, he became drowsy. In his drowsiness, he saw an exquisitely beautiful girl, the luster of whose body filled the surroundings with divine light that was suiting beyond description. She looked at him tenderly and asked in compassionate voice, Baba, you seem to be in distress. Tell me what afflicts you. Baba said, Lali, I have lost my eyesight and I cannot read Bhagavatam. Life hangs heavy on me. What is the use of a life in which Bhagavat path and darshan of the deities and the Mahatmas is not possible? <laughs> then do not worry, Baba, say the girl assuredly. You have the garment on which the name Radeshyam is printed. Tight round your eyes when you go to sleep tonight. In the morning, you will find that your eyesight is restored. As soon as Baba heard this, his drowsiness was broken. But a sweet voice of the girl was still ringing in his ears and her lustrous figure was lingering in his mind. As she had bidden, 
He slept at night with the garment on which Radisham was printed tied round his eyes. Next morning, when he got up, he was happy to find that he could see everything as before. The daily routine of his Bhagavat's Hatpat was resumed, but the girl has stolen his heart. He was convinced that she was Radharani, upon whom he had meditated day and night. <coughs> Who else could be so kind and affectionate? But now it was impossible for him to live without her. He was constantly shedding tears in her separation. He could not bear the separation very long. On June 3, 1971, at midday, which is the time according to the Astayamalila, when Radharani goes with her Sakis to Suryakun for sun worship, he left the body to meet her in transcendental Suryakund in his Siddha Saki Deha. Baba used to say that three things were important for a sadaka. Sant Seva, the first is Sant Seva, which is service of the saints. The second is Harinam. And the third, faith in Braja Raja, the dust of Vrindavan. <laughs> You'd like to share something good of this? Yeah. <laughs> used to say that three things were important for a sadaka. The first is Sant Seva, service of the saints. The second, Harinam. And third, faith in Raja Raja. Raja Raja. Raja Raja. Right. in Braj in Raja was more important than even the service of the saints and Harinam. Because at the time of death, Sant Seva, the Seva of the saints, was not possible. And Harinam, holy name, often departed. But Braja Raj did not leave a sadaka who lived 
in Raj with faith until the end. Gopal Das Babaji ki jai. Sorry. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hari <Haribu. laughs> Thank you. Say something. So this 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 Baba mentioned <clears throat> at the time of death. So body does not work properly. So we cannot serve. But if holy name also, sometimes we may, it is difficult to chant also, because, you know, consciousness may not be proper. But uh, Braja Raj, especially Braja Bas, is always influence of Yoga Maya and also Radha Rani's foot dust. So special kind of care, powers kind of infuse us, protect us. So therefore, many sadhu want to stay in Vrindavan, very fine face. So in that sense, so it is understandable, you know, understandable, you know. So, this is, uh, I cannot say so much. So we continue. Mm. Sri Hari Gopal Goswami. Sri Hari Gopal Goswami was a descendant of Sri Narayan Bhatta Goswami, to whom the deity Radharani in the temple at Barsana first appeared, and who, at the behest of Sri Rupa and Sri Sanatana, completed the remaining task of the rediscovery of the holy places connected with the Leela of Sri Krishna, which they and their forerunner, Sri Lokanath Goswami, had started. He was a disciple of Sri Duleshwar Goswami of Unchagram. Unchagram is uh, Radhika Saki's place, maybe. Mm. Yeah? Not so far from Barasaki. Not, not Barasaki, mm. quite near. Mm. Village of Radhika Saki. Mm. It's, it's in Barasana, the Barasana, right? You can see the village, no? No, no. no. <laughs> if it's uh, uh, from Barasana, maybe a li little bit light. Mm -hmm. Light place, a little mountain there. Yeah. He used to live in Nimaran in Alvara state, where he had his Gaddi, this, which is the seat of an Acharya, the Gaddi, and the temple of his Thakur Sri Lanile Sarakar. Lanile Sarkar was the deity Bal Gopal presented to Narayan Bhatta Goswami by Sri Krishna himself. Lanile Gopal, like Lokanath Goswami's deity Gokulananda, helped Narayan Bhatta Goswami in the discovery of Leela Stalis, of Leela places of Raja. 
The Raja of Alavar, the king of Alavar, was his disciple. He was a Vaidya physician by profession, but he was also a great Pandit. He was well versed in Hindi, Sanskrit, Telugu and English. He had thorough knowledge of the six systems of Indian philosophy and the six Sandarbhas of Sri Jiva Goswami. <clears throat> he had made a special study of Srimad Bhagavatam. He was by nature very simple and saintly. In spite of his learning, lineage and status as the Raja Guru of the Raja of Alvar, his living was most simple and unostentatious this word unostentatious which means without uh, senza ostentazione senza ostentazione quindi senza in English being humble no like um, a lot of knowledge but remain uh, very humble <coughs> when you have a lot of knowledge you can you can be proud and mm. say I know this and that mm. but in this case uh, he was I, I believe very humble mm. still his fame had reached the people of Haryana many Thakurs Gujaras and Yadavas of Haryana were his disciples. He used to pass most of his time quietly in Bhajan. In his old age, he shifted from Alvara to Unchagram near Barsana, so that he might spend all his time in Bhajan without any interruption. He also took along with him his Thakur Sri Lanilaji. In Unchagram, he lived in his ancestor's old Daoji's temple, in which Narayan Bhatta used to live. In front of the temple, at the top of the hill, is the old temple of Lalita Saki. On the right hand side of Lalitaji's temple is a beautiful spot covered by green bowers and thick foliage. Here Goswamiji used to sit and do bhajan throughout the day. He returned at home at night, but most of the night also. I didn't catch that. Could you try again? But most of the night, also, <laughs> he passed in Sorry, Bhajan. I'm still not sure. sure. <laughs> but most of the night, also, he passed in Bhajan. His eyes were always wet in remembrance of Radharani. Thus, he passed the last 20 years of his life quietly in Bhajan. On the night of March 30, 1990, when he was more, more than 100 years old, but in good health, he suddenly ex exclaimed, I will go, I will go. The doors of Friji's Radharani's temple have opened. Purnamasi has come. <laughs> The other members of the family got up from their sleep with a start. They asked in bewilderment, where will you go? It is 12 o'clock at night. Sriji's temple is closed. 
God alone knows whether he heard them. He went on repeating, Radhe, Radhe. At two o'clock, the crown of his head rent and his room was aglow with a divine light. His body fell back on the pillow and his soul passing through the Brahma Randra flew to Radharani Skunja in the form of her Saki to live with her and serve her eternally. Shri Gopal Das Goswami Ki Jai Ho! Hari Gopal Das Goswami Mm. We are so ignorant, you know, because, you know, we are so neophyte and we are practicing Bhakti Bhakti. If we are practicing, you know, Raghano Gampajan, we may have darshan. This 1990s, like, you know, very just uh, sati, sati that's only mercy we could meet Sadhu. It's right now mercy. Hmm? Right now, now also mercy, but as you know, this is uh, interesting. Do you know about Narendra Tagosani? Hmm. They have some connection with Gopal Bhatta. Hmm? They have some connection with Gopal Because Bhatta. Bhatta is like uh, some kind of, how do you say? Title. 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 And we had uh, before, uh, like, uh, Rupa Sanatana and Goswamis, six Goswamis, they are kind of, how do you say, uh, try to be established in the lost holy place. Uh -huh. And then Narayabhata Goswami is, after, I don't know how much generation, I don't know, one generation, two generation, three generation, I'm not sure. But after that, Narayabhata Goswami is kind of more, kind of, more deep, kind of innovate, more find out. And uh, he, he kind of did kind of Braja Mandara, Parikiram. Yeah. So I don't know exactly what I just have mentioned. That very famous, famous Goswami, mm -hmm. after six Goswami. He was in the, was he, he the one, because I've read about who was he the one uh, in the lineage of Laudanda's Thakur? That was before. That was before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, I don't know. <coughs> we proceed? Yes. Next one. Yes, please. Okay. Chapter 34. Sri Ramakrishna Das Babaji <clears throat> Avyavrita Bhajanat In this aphorism, Sri Narada Muni says that success in the practice of devotion is achieved through ceaseless bhajan. The essence of bhajan is ceaseless remembrance of the Lord. Sri Krishna says, Ananya chetaha satatam yomam smarati nityashaha tashaham sulabaha parta nitya yuktasya yoginaha or Juna. 
I am easily reached by the yogi who constantly thinks of me, who has no other thought and is ceaselessly attached to me. <coughs> the devotee cannot tolerate even a moment's break in continuous remembrance of the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam says, if the devotee is offered all the wealth and splendor of the three worlds in exchange for this continuance of remembrance of the lotus feet of the Lord, even for half a second, he remains unmoved. How can he detach himself from the divine feet, which even the devas fail to realize through constant meditation? Sri Ram Krishna Das Babaji's life is an illustrious example of Sisley's Bhajan. Born in 1911, with strong samskaras of bhakti in a village near Jasohara in East Bengal, he did not lose time in determining his goal and dashing towards it like an arrow, like an arrow. He renounced the world at the early age of 17 or 18 immediately after passing the intermediate examination, went to Sri Ramdas Babaji Maharaj, the renowned saint of Patabani Ashram, Calcutta, took initiation from him and stayed with him for some time to serve him. Then, with his permission, and blessings, he went to Varanasi to study Sanskrit and the Shastras. He studied Srimad Bhagavatam, Sat Samdarbha, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Ujjwal Nilamani, and other important Bhakti Shastras. After completing his study of the Shastras, he went to Vrindavan, took Vesha from his god-brother Sri Rajani Babaji Maharaj of Govindakund, Vrindavan, and proceeded to Maghera, a small village about four miles from Chatikara, for lifelong ceaseless bhajan. An essential part of his bhajan was kirtan. He performed kirtan four times during the day. Prabhati kirtan early in the morning at 3.30 a.m. Madhyana kirtan at midday. Arti kirtan in the evening and Abhisar kirtan at night at about 10 p.m. These are all the means like Lila Kirtan. So he performed Kirtan four times during the day. Prabhati Kirtan early in the morning at 3.30. I don't know the Sanskrit transliteration, but it's like a Lila Kirtan. That you, that you do kirtan uh, singing the lilas. The huh? the Cooking. No, I think 3.30 a.m. Oh. So probably it's Nishanta. when you wake up. Nishanta Lila. In Nishanta Lila. Then Madhyan, Madhyana Kirtan in midday. Middle Kirtan, Madhya. Arti Kirtan in the evening. And Abhisar Kirtan in the night. Mm -hmm. So when Radharani goes out to meet Krishna. 
of Isar Kirtan at night at about 10 p.m. He performed Kirtan at such a high pitch that his voice could be heard in the remotest corner of the village. His engrossment in Kirtan was so deep that sometimes during Kirtan he exclaimed aloud, Hanitai or Harade, and fell senseless on the ground. All the rest of his time he spent in Giridhari Seva and Lilasmaran. Not a moment of his life was lost without Smarana. He was often heard repeating the following lines of Hanuman. Kaha Anuman Vipati Prabhu Soi Jabatava Sumiran Bhajana Nahoi. O Lord, when there is no remembrance or bhajan of your lotus feet, that time is the time of the greatest calamity or misfortune. Even while Baba attended to his bodily needs like easing nature or bathing, his marana went on uninterrupted. That time he used to be primarily engaged in smarana. The bodily activities went on automatically on account of habit. <laughs> this is this is amazing. Wow. Huh? Yo, 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 you may say tell 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 This, this is, remind me how Gurudev was absorbed by the mercy of his Guru. Then he told all this, his bodily function going automatically without his absorption, he not noticed. And his wife told what he not speaking, his like was absent in this time. <laughs> Loud, please. After, after repeat, loud. Repeat, repeat loud. And uh, I, I remember well, how you well, related. Well, close, close, close. Yeah. close. Oh. Like this, rather, rather. More loud. Rather, rather. More loud. <coughs> Actually, speaker, you know. Oh. Ah, oh. that's more thing. I remember how. Srila Gurudev narrated his own story by the mercy of his Gurudev, Radha Govinda Goswami. He was on, in trance. In this trance, he not um, taking care of but his body, but body performed bodily functions uh, automatically. But all consciousness was in transcendental world. And these stories remind me, but Mm. Yeah, Radhe. After a few years of strictly disciplined life and constant bhajan, he conquered sleep and hunger. He used to be engaged in bhajan constantly from 3.30 a.m. to 2.30 a.m. the next day, thus sleeping only for one hour out of the 24 hours in a day. Oh. On the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> He went out for Madhukari to only three houses at midday. If he did not get anything from them, he returned to his kutir and fasted instead of wasting time by going to other houses. 
He ate only two rotis chapati in the day and one fourth of a roti at night. It may seem incredible from the bodily point of view that one may live long if he sleeps and eats so little. But as we have already seen in so many other cases, the saints who practice bhajan constantly rise above the body. They drink deep of the nectar that drips into their hearts from above at the time of smarana. It is this that keeps them alive and happy. The condition in which Baba lived was itself a proof that he had risen above the body. His kutir was so small that he could hardly lie down in it with his legs fully stretched. Around the kutir the land was so low that during rains it was flooded and the kutir was cut off from the rest of the village. Baba had to wade through the flooded land every time he went out for Madhukari. The mosquitoes also plagued and pestered his body beyond description. Yet he seemed to be either totally unaware or unmindful of them. <coughs> the villagers requested him to move to some other place in the village, but he refused. He regarded the situation as even more favorable to him because it deterred people from going to him and causing disturbance in his bhajan. Gurudev, can I ask you from this what we are reading, how it seems uh, so important to always have one fixed place for bhajan if you could share something on this. When the test is coming in bhajan, in, then bodily consciousness slowly is not disturbing. Krupa bhajan Krupa Guru Krupa bhajan if every moment new realizations of Leela Smara so that person who is doing that way, then he forget his bodily consciousness to see. His realization, he cannot understand the understanding by not mind. Without doing, he cannot realize it. We have to do it. This is only hint of beautiful bhajan gifts are realizing. After some time, Baba became blind. But this did not make him unhappy. 
because after he lost his physical eyes, his spiritual eyes opened. He could see Radha and Krishna and talk with them. People often heard him talking. <laughs> So far, Baba had not accepted any disciple. But after his blindness, he accepted two disciples, Prana Gaurangadas and Madan Mohandas, one of whom always lived near him in a separate kutir and served him. Baba asked both of his disciples not to accept money from anyone. He neither touched money himself nor allowed his disciples to touch it. If he needed anything for the service of his Giridari or for the protection of his own body, that also he did not accept from any person who offered it. There was no question of his accepting it, if it was brought from outside Raja or was purchased with the money of a person who lived out of Raja. If inadvertently some such thing was brought, he always came to know about it and asked his disciples to return it. Once Baba fell ill, he was taken for treatment to his Guru Ashram in Vrindavan. I went to see him since I had known him for some time and he was very kind to me. I requested him to take some milk because he was too weak. After a good deal of persuasion, he agreed. I arranged for the supply of milk. A few days later, my friend Sri Ariram Singhania, an industrialist of Calcutta, came to Rindavan. He requested me to take him to some Siddha saint for darshan. I took him to Baba. He was very much impressed by him and wanted to do some service to him. I said, Baba does not accept any service from anyone. He also does not need anything except Madhukari. With great difficulty, he has agreed to take milk for a few days. At once he said, Then please, let the milk be supplied at my expenses. I agreed rather reluctantly. Singhaniaji had not yet paid for the milk, but he could not remain hidden from Baba's keen spiritual sense that henceforth the milk he would drink would be purchased with the money of a person who lived outside of Raja. The very next day he called his disciple Madan Mohan and said, Madan, I will not leave here. Take me back to Maghera immediately. Madan said, Baba, everything here is so favorable and your health has begun to improve. You should stay here until you are quite well. No, no, you don't know. 
there is parapeksha, dependence of, on others here. I cannot stay here even for a moment. Get a tonga at once. Tonga was the old uh, kind of vehicle used to with the uh, with the uh, horses. Okay. Or bulls used to move in these times. There was no rickshaw, of course. Mm. With big wheels. So that yeah. Uh -huh. Madan had to bring a tonga and take him back to Maghera the same day. Once again, Baba fell ill in 1984. His godbrother, Sri Vishwarupa Das Baba, who lived in Ral, a village about four miles from Maghera, took him to Ral for treatment. <coughs> He kept him in a room in Basanti Kibagicha, close to his own kutir. Baba was physically ill, but spiritually he seemed to swim always in the ocean of bliss. The waves of the ocean tossed him up and down, and he sometimes laughed, sometimes wept, and sometimes cried aloud like one who had gone mad because the bliss was too intense for his frail body and mind to contain. One night at about one o'clock he shouted, Jainitai! Jainitai! and became unconscious. Vishwaru Baba came running. When he saw him lying unconscious, he apprehended that he had perhaps breathed his last. He cocked hold of his wrist to feel his pulse. But as soon as he touched Baba, a heart-rending sound emanated from his throat and a shock like that of an electric current threw Vishwaru Baba three or four feet away from his bed. Perhaps Baba had seen Nityananda Prabhu and his body was charged with a divine current that caused the shock. The electric shock. Oh. The disciple of Vishwarupa went to him mm. to feel the pulse because he thought that he left the body. Mm. And as soon as he touched to him, he was moved away three, four feet like an electric shock. Mm -hmm. The next day was a Kadashi. At one o'clock at night, when Baba was engaged in bhajan, he saw that his guru, Sri Ram Das Babaji, Param Guru, Sri Radha Raman Charan Das Deva, and a number of other Mahatmas entered the Bagicha, the garden, dancing and performing kirtan to the accompaniment of Mridanga and Kartals, they say to him, We are going to Vrindavan, you also come. With this, they suddenly disappeared and Baba fell unconscious. On Trayudasi, May 13, 1984, at noon, Baba sent for Sri Shivacharan Var Varshaneya, a disciple of one of his god brothers. When he came, Baba was doing japa. He said to him, Baba Ji Maharaj, Sri Ramdas Baba, and Bane Baba, Sri Radha Raman Charandas Deva, have asked me to go to Vrindavan. So please take me there at once. So he said to this person who just came that his guru and his param guru, they appeared 
and told him to go to Vrindavan. So he asked him, please take me there. Varsaneyaji said, Baba, it is very hot just now. Let us go in the evening. No, no, I shall go just now. Don't waste time. Varsaneyaji brought a tonga. Baba sat in the tonga along with Varsaneyaji and Madan Mohan. As Varsaneyaji touched Baba to help him get into the tonga, he felt that a current ran through his body. Baba's body was still charged with the divine current that had struck him and made him unconscious on the Ekadashi day. Gurudev? Yeah. I want to ask that these disciples of Baba, being close to him, when they receive this uh, kind of electric shocks and they see the different symptoms of uh, Bhav in their Gurudev, is not explained here, but surely how much mercy uh, they're getting. So, is it that basically just by being close to one such uh, saint, Siddha saint, that is the uh, maximum that a sadaka, that someone can do, because you naturally get all uh, the experiences of bhajan just by being close to him, to be, being close to his body, like this is much more powerful than doing any kind of sadhana, austerities, penance, just by oneself, right? Yeah. One time, my guru, the 334, he is 120 years old, and he is shouting. Very highly. Nitai, Nitai. And this voice is coming up to gate from the his room. Old temple was listening that voice. We are sitting and doing bhajan, and he was in his ecstasy. And the vib his vibration, he was so charged that whole room was charged. No. This become like a current. We go to see the saintly person to receive that current of vibration. Of. Only the darshan of the Mahajans are change our life. One of my god brother, he was a skier from Vienna. He every year come to December only for first of January to to be with him because he never talk English, my Baba. And he never understand any Hindi, but he only sit in his front, and he feels so charged by his vibration that he don't need to ask anything. I say, why you come? <laughs> and why not you ask any question? He said, my all answer is clear when I sit in the front of him. <laughs> And he was really deep in his bhajan. 
कृष्णदास एंड राधा दास And when I go a preaching program, we don't want to talk with me. He says, "You read your Guru Dev. You dress red color, and you are preaching. I don't want to see you." Then she thinks that I change my guru or something. So his love. Who say this to you? Who say this to you, Guru? Huh? He thinks that I change my guru and I become sannyas. Who? Who thinks? Is it Krishnadas? My ah, God. Krishnadas. Okay, okay. Sorry. No man to meet with. Me. I went to see him. And then he don't want to see me. Then I talk. No, no, I want to see you. Then he we talk, and when he understands that no, I am not change anything, then he talks. <laughs> Service of Guru Dev. What he said to me to do, I do that. Ready, ready to talk something. How much faith in Guru Dev and love with Guru Dev? And if you have to realize and meet that saintly person, they are always hiding and living. Many are still in Vrindavan or Bhagavane. Is always in his. Service mood and chanting, deep in the they are reaching the real meaning of the bhajan. No other material desire. Really. I I see from my eyes. I feel and I have felt. Bhajan means very. Every current in the body of the body runner, and vibration of currents are moving out. This is the wave. And they love so much. So there is a day that they have a direct connection.
as their activities and thinking is only for his nothing else. Mind is not going up at all. That's it. That is the viewer. And <laughs> only they are watching their passion. And what is happening is also his mind. This mantra is a mystic power. <laughs> How deep you go, you realize. I, I can share good one small story on this matter. Yeah. But of the power of the current of bhajan of the saints. This is this story is uh, about you actually. <laughs> <laughs> so there was in 2011 or 12 in Kartik time, the Italian devotees came here, Ramananda Sanatani, who they are here also now. And there was one lady, friend of uh, Vrindavaneshwari. Vrindavaneshwari, the Italian uh, small woman, old, old lady. So this was just a friend of her. She uh, never stayed with devotee or anything. And she is a professor of philosophy, actually, in high school. And she was a big atheist. <laughs> not just that she not believed in God, but very activist. Mm. Like knowing all the philosophers of atheism, uh, doing conference, like was an intellectual lady. And she was coming and was telling all her convictions and, 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 uh, and, uh, and ideas and believes why she believed that she doesn't believe in God and all these things like very prepared, not just, you know, a uh, ordinary atheist. <laughs> then she came to Vrindavan and the first or second day she came downstairs here in the basement to see Gurudev. And she stayed here for some time and she not talk even with Gurudev very much. You know, of course, Gurudev always ask, welcome, who are you, how are you, and what are you doing, and all these things, but not any personal talk, really. When she came out from the basement, then she told to Ramananda, I don't know who is that man sitting down there, but he, he just destroyed all my belief and conviction about atheism. <laughs> I, I am very confused. <laughs> I don't know what to do, what to believe. <laughs> and after 10 or 15 days, she got Harinam also. So what now? She's now in Italy. She's, on, with, she's living in Rome. Uh, we don't see her much, but she's on the like Radadasyam Italy group, what, chat, chat group and WhatsApp. So, like job, still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. 
<laughs> so yeah, just you could have even uh, did not say so many things to her in a let's say verbal way or personal way, but okay. Uh, <laughs> so at two thirty PM the Tonga reached the Guru Ashram of Baba. At Guru Ashram, non stop Hari Kirtan had been going on for thirty years. Baba said, Take me to the place of Kirtan. He went and sat there and remained sitting in meditation for about half an hour. He was perhaps waiting for Nisrimma Chaturdasi, which was to start after half an hour. As soon as Nishrima Chartudasi started, he shouted, Jainitai, Jai Radhe, and left the body to meet his Gurudev and Param Gurudev in Transcendental Vrindavan and to play his part in the Divine Lila of Radha Krishna under their guidance. Everyone had thought that Baba had gone to Vrindavan but would return to Magera after a few days as he had done before. But this time he was called to the transcendental Vrindavan from where no one ever returned. If he appeared to have gone to the phenomenal Vrindavan, it was because what appeared as the phenomenal Vrindavan was itself the transcendental Vrindavan. It appeared as phenomenal to people whose vision was perverted. To one like Baba, whose spiritual eyes had opened, it was the same transcendental Vrindavan where Krishna Lila was eternally going on, where not only the gopas and gopis, but the birds and animals, the trees and creepers, and even the grass and the dust were made of sat, assistance, chit, intelligence, and ananda, bliss, and were eternally engaged in the service of Krishna, where everything was tuned to the flute of Krishna, where even time stood still or flowed, and space expanded or contracted like the petals of a lotus, according to the sweet will of Krishna. It was the same Vrindavan which surpassed in beauty all the other Lokas, planets, including Vaikuntha and Goloka. And the same Vrindavan to which Sri Prabodhananda Sarasvati Pad pointed out when he said, Oh, this Vrindavan of mine, stationed above every other dam, how it shines near me like a big moon in all its resplendent beauty. Vrindavan Mahimamrita 483. Shri Ram Krishna does Babaji Ki. Gurudev, sorry again. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask that this Vrindavan is surpassing beauty 
in uh, all the other logas, including Vaikunta and Goloka. <coughs> Can you share how it surpassed in beauty Goloka. Vaikunta, we know, is, is Narayan, but <laughs> Goloka. <laughs> This Vrindavan, the person who keep his body here, fortunately, by Nitai Mahasi, we can realize it. He has everything. He has nothing problem. <coughs> when he come, he think how he will manage. When, when you start living, you don't know how to manage outside. This is the love. My Gurudev say, you travel and preach whole world. I was trying. Then he said, no, no, no. After this, you will stay in Vrindavan. Like you will say, let's see. This is his much I'm doing. I have no desire to go out. Without mercy of Nitai, without mercy of Buddha, it will not happen. All the circumstances, he makes favorable to stay here. And we are lucky that we are living in the town. <laughs> We have to be fortunate to be uh, living in Vrindavan because Vrindavan was Gaudiya Vaishnav. That say Goloka Vrindavan, but Vrindavan Goloka. That is more deep meaning there. In Vrindavan, there is a Goloka for Gaudiya Vaishnava. Because Parkiya Bhav is in Goloka Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, Goloka is Goloka That is deeper Vrindavan. <laughs> Sorry. That story which Gurudev just stated about his Gurudev of all Bhagavad Gita. Sure. So, uh, Radha, uh, Radha Charan Baba is asking, uh, he did not understand uh, before the story with your uh, Param Gurudev Gurudev uh, how he shouted Nitai Nitai, he asking if. I asking you. To okay, he's asking me to repeat. So uh, I will repeat. I think this is 
correct me good if I'm wrong, when the kirtan was going on one uh, morning, you told the story that uh, Mohandada, Radha Mohandas Babaji was doing kirtan, and when the kirtan reached its pinnacle, then... Come to the Baba. Huh? Come to the Bab, yeah. We do the Baba big darshan. In that song you made a Baba wish, awareness of the Baba you made up in that in that melody. And uh, then Param Gurudev suddenly was in meditation and suddenly exclaimed, actually roaring. He jumped. Roaring. Roaring. Jumped. Okay. <laughs> Please use Shah Gurudev because... <laughs> he jumped up and shouted a very high voice. Impossible from him to stop in under twenty years because he's, a, he's coming from his navel. He never. I listen to loud voice only, very slow drum, very uh, soft, soft drum, <coughs> very very sweet drum. You can imagine under twenty years age person how how much he is strong. Only his body was a skeleton. There is no anything. My God. Like Kesha Baba. Kesha Baba is very strong. He was. He is only 60 years, 70 years old. And, More fit than us. And he is 120 <laughs> years, double than him. <laughs> <laughs> and he jump up? Jump up on the bed. He can walk. He was always walking. You don't need any help or stick. He never keeps the stick. Only just from dogs and this pocket. He walks from Mahaprabhu temple to here, Harabari to here. He always walks. <laughs> Secondly, he was keeping a bag with Yamuna side one time. Almost, yeah, one bag. He never keep He opened the book to Manika. Somebody gives money to keep it and keep it there. I don't know. Like you used to keep your money under the mattress. She has no Amira. <laughs> Everything under the mattress. <laughs> He cannot be a dust. This is hundred fifteen years old voice. Hundred fifteen years. Good. 
in the sense of Raj, also one time we were reading it saying that we cannot imitate the saints, but we can meditate on them, on their pastimes. Then mercy flows by their prayers. That is the talent. That is the vibe. Why we receive the vibration? Flow. <coughs> so that's why when we glorify the Mahajans, it's not to glorify that we put up there, of course, very elevated, but we glorify so that mercy can flow to our lives over there. <laughs> that challenge can fight. So if we Guru Dev meditate on our Guru Parampara, then this mercy is coming straight to us. Okay, I'm not qualified. My Guru says with care. This is the meaning they all has to care. That is the more protection. One protection, one guru is protecting. And the image is protecting. All they are trying to bring up to you. Then there is no any difficulty. This is the 